Today we're doing a re-review of the Bugera V5 Infinium amplifier. I've had this for a number of years. Let's see how it sounds. Welcome back to the channel folks, my name's Shane, if you're new here don't forget to subscribe and also click the bell. So the intro clip that you just heard had no post processing at all, I had the amplifier mic'd up with the Rode M3 microphone and then all I did was pan the rhythm tracks left and right. So you heard it on its own and then also with some effects pedals going into the front end. The reason I'm doing this re-review today is that I'm not overly happy with the original video I did a number of years ago. And I've had this amp and I've used it a lot since I first got it and I understand the best ways now to get the most out of it. So what you're going to see in this video is how it can sound on its own clean and dirty. Then we're also going to try it with some delay, volume boost and overdrive. Then we're going to also test how loud it actually is with a dB meter or decibel meter with the power attenuator on 5 watts, 0.1 watts and 1 watt. So it drops down all the way down to 0.1, 1 or 5. So it's got plenty of options. I'll show you the amp up close. That's all you get on the front. Volume, tone, gain and reverb. Nice and simple. We get an on off switch on the back. This is where the magic is, if you want to call it the magic. We've got the power attenuator output here. 5, 1 and 0.1 being the lowest. 1 watt being in the middle and 5 watt at its loudest. It has an EL84 and a 12AX7 valve underneath this particular part here. I've actually replaced the EL84 because the one I had in this had a severe rattle. Other than that, I haven't touched it since I first got it. It's got a turbo sound speaker, which I kind of like. It's quite heavy for its size too. It's probably unassumingly heavy. When you first see these amps, you think, oh, they're only small, they're going to be pretty light. And being that they're a proper valve amp, they do weigh a bit, which I kind of like. That cabinet's built well. The grill cloth hasn't sagged or done anything in the last few years. And it's time to try it again. So let's get into it. All right, let's get into it. I'm playing my PRS SE. This is all stock and I've set it up for a clean tone, which also works for a pedal platform. We've got the gain at three, the tone at seven, the volume at six, and the reverb between three and four. We'll, miss, we'll mess with the reverb as we go. Now this is about as high as you can have the gain before it starts to bring in some sort of break up into the sound. So here we go. This is neck pickup. Bring the gain up to 12 o'clock. So as you can hear, that's that really nice off clean tone that I like personally. And the cool thing is as you pick softer or if you turn down, it cleans up beautifully. Volume control up. All right, let's crank up the gain. Push it to about seven now. Here we go. Thank you. 
turn the reverb down it gets a little clangy the further up you have the volume so somewhere around two and three as we start to push the amp is going to sound better let's crank up the volume to eight let's dime the gain so this is as much drive as you're going to get without having the amp all the way up and it's not even that loud it's peaking just over 100 db right now that says 109 i'm not 100 percent certain how accurate that is but it's definitely loud enough to probably annoy the neighbors if you're in an apartment, obviously, but if you've got neighbors in a house next door, it's definitely no, nowhere near loud enough to annoy them. So let's turn the gain back down and put it to about four. We're gonna leave the volume where it's set and I'm gonna click on a volume boost pedal called the Mr. Boost. This is a really cool pedal. We'll add some delay as well, just so you can see how it responds to a little bit of a kick in the front end and also some delay going into the front end as well. This is with the volume currently off. <laughs> volume boost pedal let's crank it up it's now at three o'clock so it's cranked and as you can hear it's saturating the front end of the amp this is what i really dig <laughs> with some delay. Now there's no effects loop, so I'm running the delay straight after the volume boost. Let's try it now with some overdrive, thanks to the Buffalo Effects Carrera Overdrive, one of my favorites. Let's give this a shot. Let's try a different guitar. Let's try some different tones now with the Pure Sailor Mendiola electric guitar. It's loaded with a mini humbucker and a Telecaster neck single coil pickup. We've got the gain and the volume both at eight. So we're gonna go for some crunchy tones now. Let's give this a shot. Starting on bridge, no other pedals. Here we go. <laughs> Huge. Let's try it now with the volume boost thanks to the Mr. Boost pedal. I've got it set to 12 o'clock on the dial. Here we go. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, so what I did there, I was on the bridge pickup, I clicked on the boost, which was on, and then I also hit some delay and went over to the neck pickup. So you heard a combination of both the pickups there, then I just put some delay on towards the end. And I gotta tell you, this amp's pushing about as hard as you can get it to push. It's pretty loud in here now, but uh, it's definitely still not loud enough to gig with. I've tried it, even at a small gig, just doesn't have that headroom, but it's definitely fun for playing at home. We'll try out the power attenuator again. I'll let you know how much of a difference there is with my decibel meter as well. So here we go. Over to the Artist Guitars Grunge Master electric guitar. I'm gonna be on both pickups so I don't get any buzz. It'll be a lot more pleasing that way. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try and play the same thing three times and I'm gonna show you what the power attenuator can do. And I'll also comment after each pass how loud it is. No other effects on, just the amp cranked as it was before. Here we go. Peaked at around 111, average around 109, give or take. So let's drop it down to one watt mode. So this is quite a bit of a difference. Peaked at 105, average was somewhere around 103. So that's a whole lot less than just before. And the scales, are a different kind of scale to percentage. So any change is quite noticeable. And now to 0.1 watts, here we go. Same thing again. Helps if I turn the guitar on. It's so around 92 on average. It might have peaked slightly higher than that. The, I'm looking at a screen that's upside down, but it's a huge difference. That's conversation level. That, that almost doesn't even sound as loud as my voice in the room. I'll show you it with my shirt mic now. And this is me talking with the same settings on the microphone. So you can get a rough idea of how quiet this thing actually is. Now back to the close mic and we'll go back to five watts and you can hear it sort of round itself out. I can see it on the waveform, how different all of these passes were. Here we go. Just out of curiosity, I'm gonna hit the volume boost and see if we can get it to be any louder than what we just saw before. This will be the last thing that I do. Here we go, we'll go bridge pickup for this one. About the same, 109, 110, somewhere around there is its maximum. It looks like the average was around 109, so not too bad. Definitely not loud enough to gig with. I think running the, the volume boost into the front end like this on an amp with very little headroom isn't gonna give you a volume boost. It's gonna give you more preamp distortion. I've commented on that on a number of different demos. I've done of pedals of that type as well. If you're running it into a dead clean amp, but it doesn't have, that has a whole lot more headroom, like a 40 watt amp, it's gonna get a lot louder. But when you're running it into something that's already dirty and something that's already at its maximum, it's just gonna enhance the preamp gain. So I hope this video has been helpful. Thanks again for watching folks. My name's Shane. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and also click that little bell. If you got some value out of the video, please give it a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. Now, I hope this video has been helpful because I really want to go over some of the stuff that I didn't go over in the first video and just to make a much better video than back then production was kind of going through this weird phase of green screens and all this kind of weird stuff. And I thought, you know what, let's try it with a backing track. Let's try it with some pedals, some different guitars, and I'll explain how loud it is in the room and also test it with a decibel meter as well. And I'll show you that as well. I don't often show this on camera, but that's what I was running at about one meter from the actual uh, amplifier so that's what I was using right there. If you want to find out about this amplifier I'll leave some links in the description below as well but it's a great little amp. I purchased this a number of years ago now maybe two or three years ago something like that and it's been a great little home amplifier. Now I'm not using it as much as this little amp right now. This is the Moore Hornet which is a digital modeling amplifier and you might be thinking how come you're choosing a modeling amp over this? 
it's just a convenience thing. I don't have to plug in pedals. I can just get a, a great sound at a low volume out of that. But this has more of that traditional amplifier sound. So if you're not one for the digital stuff and you just want to plug in and play, these are a really great choice. You probably won't even need to get it onto five watts. If you're just playing at home most of the time, one watt will probably be enough. If you live in an apartment building, 0.1 watts is where you'll probably live because five watts will definitely annoy the neighbors if you've got someone upstairs or something like that. But if you live in a house, even five watts I don't think would have too many noise complaints. It's just not that loud. And I think it's also because of the speaker. It's got a small speaker and I think that helps keep the overall volume down. I'd love to try this maybe through my Marshall 2x12 back there one day and we'll see how that sounds. But uh, yeah, the turbo sound speaker, I haven't got any complaints like I, I said. I did change one of the valves out in the back to a different brand just because that initial one was faulty. It had an oscillation rattle noise. It worked, but it was really rattly and it sounded like there was loose glass in the back. I swapped that out, no problem since, and it's been that way now for a couple of years. So thanks again for watching. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below. Check the links in the description and I will catch you soon. See ya.